Relay makes it simple to connect to other players in your Unity game. It takes care of the port forwarding and sets up the firework for you, so players can just share the join code and connect to the same game. Relay doesn't use dedicated servers, so the server logic is still running on one of the players, but it has to first go through the relay. This means that the players are not directly connected, which makes the networking a lot safer. I'm continuing with the project that we set up using netcode for game objects, and to start we'll need to download the package, so go to the Unity register packages and search for Relay. Because it is a multiplayer service from Unity, we also need to make sure that our project is connected to a Unity ID, so we'll go to Edit, Project Settings, and go to the services. So here make sure that your project is linked to a Unity ID, if it is not, you can just connect it. We'll also need to set up Relay in the Unity dashboard, so you can just hit this link to go to the dashboard. You will need to sign in. As you are in the Unity dashboard of your project, you can just go to the product section and scroll down till you find the Relay. You can see there are other multiplayer services that we'll be using later, so for now we can just launch the Relay. As we have all of the boring stuff out of the way, we can go back to Unity and we can select our network manager, where instead of using the Unity transport protocol, you can just easily switch it in the inspector and select the Relay Unity transport. And this is really all it takes. Next, I will create a simple UI where we will be able to either host the game or join the game using join code. As we have this beautiful UI created, we will need to create some kind of Relay manager that will actually allow us to join or host the game. So we have the Relay Manager script on an empty object and we can jump right into it. I added it using Text Mesh Pro so that we can add those two references for the join code text which will display us the code and the input field where we can actually input the code. The first thing you need to do when you are using Unity services, which we are for the Relay, is to initialize the Unity services. You can see that it is inside Unity Services Core namespace, so we can just edit and then initialize the services. You can see that this function is called async, so it may actually take it some time until it initializes, so if we would have it just like this, the whole game would freeze. And to make sure that our game doesn't freeze while initializing, we can just put the await keyword before it. We also need to make the function async, and if you are not familiar with asynchronous programming, you can just check one of my tutorials. After that, we need to authenticate the user, so we could either do that through Google or through some other platforms, or the easy way is to sign in anonymously. To authenticate, we need to add using Unity Services Authentication, then we can just grab the instance because it is a singleton, and you can see that we can sign in with Apple or with Facebook, or we can sign in anonymously. As we have this stuff out of the way, we can start creating and joining into the relay. So we can either start host with a relay, and we can input the number of maximum connections, or we can connect to a relay using join code. Both of these functions will again be async because creating a relay or connecting to it can take some time, so just we can make sure that the game never freezes. And when we start hosting, I will make the function return a string, which will be the code, and when we start client, I will make it return a boolean to know if we have connected successfully. To use these tasks, we need to add using system.threading.tasks, when we are starting the host with a relay, we need to create an allocation that is going to tell the relay what is the maximum number of players. To use the allocation, we need to add unity services relay.models, and then again we can just await it and access it from the relay service. For that, we need to add using unity services.relay, so there are many namespaces already. So from the relay service, we are accessing the instance because again it is a singleton, and then we can just create the allocation async which means that again, we can use the await keyword. After that, we need to actually do something with the allocation, so we'll need to access the Unity Transport component that we have on the network manager here, and we'll need to set some server relay data to it. So we'll access the network manager, which is on the same object where we have the Unity Transport component. For that, we need to add using unity.netcode, and to access the Unity Transport class, we need to add using unity netcode transports.utp. And after that, we can finally set the server relay data. So for that, we need to add using Unity Networking Transports.relay. And to the relay server data, we need to pass in the allocation that we have created and also the protocol that we want to use. 
so we will be using DTLS. There are other types of protocols that you can use, but this is the most standard one, so we'll stick to that. After we have created the allocation and set it to the unity transport, we can finally get the join code. We are getting the join code from the relay service, again accessing the instance and just calling the function get join code async so we can await it because it is async and we need to pass in the ID of the allocation. After that, we need to access the network manager to start the host, which is the same as if we would just press this button. So we are starting the host, which is going to return us a boolean if it worked or not. If it successfully started the host, then we can just return the join code, which is the string that we need to output. Otherwise, if something failed, we can just return now. I have created a new function start relay, which we'll just call by pressing the button because we can't call task, so we have to call a void. In here, we are just getting the join code using the start host with relay function, and then I'm just displaying it using the join code text. And I will just let you check those namespaces once more, because there is quite a lot of them. Back in Unity, I am going to select the host button, and down here we can just add the onclick function, so I will connect it to the relay manager and just call the start relay function, just like that. We can try pressing the host button, and we can see that it is already doing something, and it correctly generated the code for us. And you can see that it also found the best region, which for me is Europe best 4. So if you live somewhere in Asia or in America, it is going to select the closest relay to you. So joining as a host and generating the code is really simple. And now we'll get to the joining part. This will actually be even more simple, because we'll need to create some join allocation. Then again, set the server relay data, and then we can just start as a client. So we are creating the join allocation again using the relay service and we are passing in the join code. After that, we can again access the unity transport component. So I will just copy this line and instead of passing the allocation, we'll pass in the join allocation. And finally, we can start the client and return. So we are returning a boolean if we have successfully connected or not. So we need to check if the string join code is not null or empty. And then I'm just starting the client on the network manager. And if this succeeds, then it is going to return as true. I took pretty much all of this code from the official Unity documentation and tried to explain it to you. And later we'll also add some exception handling. I have also added a function join relay that is just calling the start client with relay function and inputting the code from the input field. So back in Unity to the join button, we'll add on click listener and is going to trigger the function on the relay manager that is called join relay. I made a build of the game, so now I will try to run it on my two computers. On the first one, I will start as a host, and you can see that it gave us the code. We can move as usual, everything works just fine. Now I will go to the second computer, where I will input the code, and I will hit join. And yep, we can see that we are connected in the same world with those two players, and we can move independently and everything is being synchronized well. So this way you can connect with players all over the world and you don't have to worry about port forwarding or setting up the firewall. I will just quickly go back to the code where we'll handle some exceptions, because if something goes wrong with Relay and you have no way to handle the exception, it may break your whole game. So when we are starting a host and we are accessing the Relay service, it is a good practice to first write try which is going to try to run anything that is inside of it. And if it catches some error, we can just handle the exception. So when anything goes wrong with this part, it is going to catch an error displayed in the console and return from the function. So it is a good practice to also add these try and catches when you are accessing the relay service to get the join code and also when you are starting the client with relay. And that's it! You can see that creating a multiplayer game using netcode for game objects and relay is quite simple. In next parts of this series, we'll take a look at lobby, matchmaking, multiplayer that will allow us to use Unity's dedicated servers. We may also make some movement predictions so that the clients are not experiencing so big latency, and much more. Soon, I will also be publishing my second video on Patreon, which will be about learning effectively and is focused on game development. Don't forget to also join our Discord server. I hope that this video was useful. If you have any questions, drop them down to the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next videos. Bye! Thanks for watching this video till the end. If you are looking for a Unity, C Sharp, or Paul tutor, 
then I'm here for you, so feel free to send me a message to my Gmail and take a look at my website for more info. I can help you with your personal projects or teach you anything about game development you would want to know. You are welcome.